still being there for us, time for us to uh, with us, uh, begin our conversation on the Anambra election, which is 11 days away, like was said earlier, and we'll be taking a conversation with the chairman of the ZLP party, Chief Dan Nwaya. We'll be touching on security and economic growth in that state, amongst uh, many other issues. Chief Dan, good to have you with us. Thank you for having me. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning viewers. Thanks for joining us. Well, it's 11 days to go, and um, INEC is still insisting that elections must hold in Anambra State on November 6th amid uh, the current security situation in that state and other parts of the Southeast. What do you think? Should the election hold? Well, first of all, let me use this opportunity to congratulate uh, High Chief Roman Dupusi on his 70th birthday, which we all uh, participated in. Uh, we pray for God to continue to give him good health. Uh, he has contributed immensely to uh, the development of this country, and he has used the instrumentality of his uh, God-given uh, establishment to give voice to the voiceless, to people ordinarily that wouldn't have been heard from different sectors of the economy now has access to information, has access to it, has access to rare power, could talk to Nigerians. Most people have become millionaires and billionaires passing through here. So Nigeria still needs him. And uh, I think he should not relent by all these uh, distractions. You know, we have distractions. We are in a society or in a country where people are witch-hunted for no reason. Uh, and uh, I know a strong man he is once he's committed to his beliefs and uh, he's sure he has not done anything untoward. He fights it to the end. And those who are pursuing him all over the place, they should leave him. He has done nothing against the law. He has done nothing against the system. Rather, he has contributed more than anybody, including all those pursuing him put together. So this nonsense should stop. And uh, the society should be allowed to be free and people should exercise their views and opinions. So I wish him happy birthday. All right. Now, back to Anambra election, whether to hold. It's clear that the election will go on. Uh, it's heartwarming with the position of the president, Mohamed Buhari, a few days ago, insisting that the election must go on. There's nothing wrong with that. And we're congratulating him by the measures he has put in place. That is, if it is executed to the end, but before then, we consulted with INEC when the security situation was on. Uh, some of us were the view that uh, the election should be uh, postponed a little bit to allow tension go down and uh, to build more confidence in the people to come and vote. Uh, we are told that soldiers will over the place will be all over the pol place. The policemen will be all over the place. And uh, we made suggestions that, look, uh, we hope the presence of the army and the police, uh, the police being taken over by them, will not scare people from coming out to vote. And uh, that may mean a governor may be elected uh, with less than 50,000 votes. So we considered those options. Another school of thought was of the opinion that it means they have succumbed to uh, threat by whatever, whoever was doing that. <coughs> but we also make the point that this won't be the first time election was postponed. We have done it even during the presidential election based on insecurity. Uh, but since everybody is of the opinion that it must go ahead, uh, let it go ahead. INEC has been ready for that election. Mm. And INEC doesn't control the security. Uh, I will only appeal to Anambra people to come out and vote. And uh, also appeal to the security agencies not to harass, intimidate people that will be coming out to vote. Because the reports we are getting from unprovoked behavior of some of these security agencies, not only in Anambra in the South is mm will mar the election. So in the president giving his directive, he should be firm and clear in giving 
an unambiguous statement as to what is expected of them. We want a free and fair process. Mm. We want Anambra people to exercise their franchise. Let them exercise their right to choose without interference. All right. Because this Chief. election is very, very important. Yeah. It's Chief. very, very important because this is an election if the proper person is elected, yeah. mm. we change the number from what it has been. Mm. Chief, I'm talking about the process. Now, a number has been in the news for all the wrong reasons um, recently. And um, uh, this, the, the electioneering process, as we know, you know, cannot do without um, ad hoc staff. Um, just on the dailies and uh, this morning was so... Um, um, you know, ad hoc, INEC ad hoc staff resign en masse because of the threat of IPOP. This is a major concern um, um, for people. Do you think that this um, mass resignation will affect, you know, the polls come 6th of November? You see, that was, uh, I didn't want to come out giving too much details as for the meeting with political parties held with INEC. I raised the proposal that we should tarry a while. Mm. I raised the issue. I made a powerful argument in the meeting that we don't want people to die. Even INEC, we don't want your staff to die. We don't want citizens to be killed. Shooting, killing people now is no longer any issue. It's nothing. As far as the South is concerned, it is nothing. And, and uh, I don't want to deviate from them, but it's like, he's an Igbo, kill him. Let me give you an example of what happened uh, uh, during the NSAS, NSAS anniversary. You know Dixon in Rebu. Yeah. Yeah. He was there. Even the DSS people identified him. Yes, we watched your program. But why did you wear this cloth here? He was wearing the Ibo Isiago. Why did you wear it? He said, what's wrong with the cloth? Before he could say anything, the boot of the gun was used to smash his leg for wearing Igbo dress. You see, the hatred has gotten to that point that we must be careful. For wearing Igbo dress, he was, he was, he just came out yesterday. And during the event yesterday, he identified one of the DSS person. That one came to him and said, I'm sorry for what happened yesterday. I told him when he called me that day, I said, look, government did not give the directive. DSS did not give this directive. You see, people are overzealous. And it's when you give a body language without saying anything, they go and carry it out. So that was why I made that suggestion that day in INEC. And I started by saying, if election was conducted that day, obi Congo will be governor. Mm. But we don't want to be governor on a roll of, a rail of blood on the street. I said, look, let us be governor so that the people we want to govern will be alive to see the development of the Congo we bring in the state. Mm. So that, that was why we brought that issue. And these people resigning now mm. has given you an indication that the place is still not safe. Mm. The people must accept with the security that, okay, the situation is clear. But let us be going All and right. let us see how they manage it. In 2011, I think the National Assembly elections uh, was put forward by a weak future logistic reasons given by INEC. And I also remember that in 2015, elections were uh, postponed by six weeks to enable uh, the government then, you know, address the security threats in the North uh, East. In 2019, we also had a situation where uh, the presidential election was also uh, shifted by a week and so. In your proposal for a shift your initial proposal for yes. a postponement of the Anambra governorship election, what time frame were you looking at? Because, you know, the security situation or issues we're having now in Anambra State and in the Southeast has been on for quite a while. So what time frame were you looking at for government to effectively address the situation before elections can hold you, you see, conveniently? You, you see, the constitution provides for election to be held for certain periods before the end of tenor. Mm. We can push it up to that point. But let me even push it further. And I made that point that we are in a special circumstance that will warranty and guarantee our being safe in tarrying a while. Assuming without considering that we got to a point 
that even the election would not be held beyond the constitutional provision. Are we going to cut our nose to spite our face? Those are such special circumstances that the State Assembly will take a position on what to do. You cannot, when people are being killed recklessly on the street, even by security agencies, and you say they should come and vote, they will not come out. Then you have an unpopular governor. I am talking of coming out to vote. I'm not talking about the results that will be written. Mm. If it is voting, you may not have 50,000 voters in the 21 local government in Anambra State. That was why we made that proposal. Since it was not accepted, you can see this development of that hog staff saying no. There will not be, there is no guarantee. Mm -hmm. see, we have what do you state. think that um, INEC is going on and insisting just, and just, if, just, they, just, if the coast is not clear? Me, just, just a minute. You see, we are putting 35,000 policemen. We are putting, so it's just... It's just there. At least with those numbers, go, go to the state that day. Mm. There are police units, you will not see one policeman. It's just within the town and few local governments. But the havoc is always done outside the periphery of the state capital. Mm. The police is overstretched. Police cannot do beyond its capacity. Poor training, even lack of arms. When police is supposed to have a huge allocation to take care of the security, instead of doing that, we are bringing the army. Mm. In other climes, you don't see the army. Chief Wanyangu, you are an Igbo man and a major stakeholder in the politics of the Southeast, and of course, by extension, uh, the country. What is really going on in the once peaceful Southeast region of Nigeria? You want me to tell you the truth? Mm. Mm? The truth is that what is happening in the South is, is important. How do you mean? Non estu factum. Mm. It is not the deed of the, of the South East. It, little thing they say, I pop. ESL. I was shocked. Garo Bashehu and the additional did not say that the rail line that was blown up a few days ago was done by I pop. I was shocked. I was expecting them to say IPOP has reached Kaduna Rail Line and ESN. I was shocked they didn't say it. Very soon, people will quarrel in their homes and we will hearing lies. IPOP must have spoken to the wife. That is the state we are getting to now. These things were important. And I said it from the first attack in the correction center in Imo, in a way. It was later the governor said, look, we have written 400 people. About eighty percent are not Igbos. Now they are getting some hungry Igbos who are going with them. Did you hear the story of the DSS person that was shot? Later they said it was he was shot in error. Mm. This says we're important. Let's assume. Let, 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 let's assume. Let, let's assume. You know, it's important as you have said. Yes. Is it impossible? Is it possible for an important crisis to thrive for this long without the complicity of those within? No, that's what I'm telling you. I've told you that they are now recruiting hungry Igbos to be showing them what to do. Let me tell you, the Igbo man is not destructive. I've said it that most Nigerians don't understand this. Igbo man that has invested everywhere in Nigeria, even this issue of agitation, is because they are nowhere. And that was why in one of my interventions, in 2016, I said the Igbo should consider President Mohamed Buhari's government as bad business, bad investment. Even though they didn't invest there, they should forget it. And they have forgotten it. But they are still not allowed to determine their own future, to determine how to survive. I have said it repeatedly. Only President Mohamed Buhari can solve this problem. And I recall in that interview, I said, look, Get in Nandi Kano. If you like, blow him up. It will not solve the problem. So keeping him there is not solving the problem. Has he spoken? But the thing has heightened. Nandi Kano is not the issue. The matter has gone beyond Nandi Kano. Mm. And that's why I said, only the president has the capacity to say enough is enough. It's not by arms. It's not by Tukana aircraft. 
you may push them into coming to be a terrorist organization. As far as I'm concerned, they're not. Forget about what they term them here. The terrorists in this country, we know them. Mm. We know them. So don't stop blackmailing ECN and IPOB. Mm. And I must caution, I am not a member of IPOB. Mm. I am not in ESN. I am for united, fair, equitable mm. country. And my position is clear. It's not negotiable. Mm. But right. all these they are pushing to the east, to the to the to IPOB, ESN, they are not doing it. Mm. Mm. These things are important, and they know it. Chief, why are you have this? Sorry, sorry, yes, sir, I mean, You have this. I'm everybody. Mm. They know that the east has the capacity to get these people. But how? You get somebody, they take him away, post him somewhere else. It continues. Let the governors, let the governors speak out on what they have found in the southeast. So it has been put there, one to demarket the place. What, I, I want to talk about the concerns because um, we know how the problem of insecurity started in Nigeria. We know how it has grown over the years. We know where we currently are with the problem of terrorists and bandits and kidnappers and people just pulling out a gun and killing another person without looking back. Your concerns about the South East, if this persists, you have said that this can stop if the president choose to stop it, but we're seeing another hydra-headed monster being raised in the, in the South Eastern part of the country. What should be done before we have another um, North Eastern situation in that part of the country? And before, you know, the fire engulfs the whole country. You see, you see, the people have passed through a lot. I came back from the house in about, about two weeks ago. I was on a particular road, manned by soldiers. And I watched the extortion going on. That has been on over the years. Security agencies now lobby their guards to push them to the southeast. Because it is only the southeast and south south that they make money. Drive from here to Kaduna and count the number of checkpoints where you have the bandits. Drive and find out. In the southeast, as soon as you are passing, getting close to Benin, it is almost every kilometer. And the amount is certain. I said, Look at this soldier. I thought soldiers don't do this. Oh, guy, you don't know. Now, them they collect now. At times, they post women by the corner. You go there and give the money. Nigerian soldier that is highly rated. I don't want to talk about the policemen. So, they have faced a lot in different forms. Brutality. They come and see you, a young man, you have dreadlocks, you have this, they are patching these trousers. They get you, they bundle you, take you away. The security is aware of this. So is it the act of the security or some people are being overzealous? That's why I told you that. President Buhari alone, as the number one citizen of Nigeria, has the absolute power to say, okay, gentlemen, stop. The box stops with the president. Mm. So if he doesn't do it, and we think fighting with uh, importing more fighter jets to Canada and all that. It will escalate it. Then you push them to a point they can produce distance. Chief, Chief Dan. Just Chief, a minute. Chief Dan, why you? Just a minute. Mm. They can produce distance mm. to fight back. Mm. Small boys can produce distance. This is, this is that, that we are spending billions to buy. It's because Nigeria is a country that we are not ready to develop. We are not ready to develop. They can produce distance. Small boys that didn't even go to school. Mm. So don't push them to that point. Because we're not asking for war. All they're asking for is treat us as they have treated others. Chief Wayan, the, the, the police authorities have on several occasions linked the security crisis in the Southeast to the activities of IPOB, allegedly. And now you have said it has nothing to do with IPOB or ESN. But how come IPOB issues a sit at home directive? a civil disobedience order, and the people comply virtually 100%, not because
they necessarily believe in the ideology of IPOB and ECN, as the case may be, but they comply out of fear of possible attacks if they do not. How do you explain that? You see, I will also refer to my last interview, 2017-18. I said, Nandekano is the only human being living or dead that has such foolishness in this country. That's none. That people will go on their own, raise their money to go on an event without being paid anything. Azikiwe well, didn't have that full action. Obafemi well, Awolo didn't have that. Nada Aminu Kano. I say, President Mohammed Buhari, this is the kind of guy you should do business with. That was three years ago. Now we are saying he's in the hands of DSS. And they are still obeying it. When I go home, I don't go out. On Mondays, I stay in the house. I'm in the village. I don't want to be attacked. Definitely, the instruction is there. But then the Kalu is here, is with you. Has he opened his mouth? And that's why I said, this matter has gone beyond Nandikano. It has gone beyond him. Nandikano cannot even stop it. Unless those issues are addressed. What are the issues to be addressed? Equality, unfairness, not, not allowing them to be free. So, these instructions don't go anywhere. Look at the day he went to court. And I thank God the DSS was able to bring him. Thank you, DSS. Will the addressing these issues you're talking about also, um, you know, put an end to this imported conflict you're talking about in the South? You see, when I, I told you that only President Buhari, they know what I'm saying. They, they know what I'm saying. I'm not talking from the cattle field. I'm not living under the rock. I know what I'm saying. And they know what I'm saying. Mm. You cannot... Look, the Ibo nation is the most hated tribe in Nigeria. It is guaranteed. How do you figure? <laughs> the Ibo nation is the most hated tribe in Nigeria. That is settled. And Ibo man goes to the north, Let does us, business, wait, become wait, rich wait, and come wait, back home. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> let, us, let us not argue about it. Go out now and do a, do a, do a, do a survey. Mm. No, but we, we've, and, also heard, mm. we've also heard people, um, Fulanese, say right now in Nigeria, the Fulanese are the most hated no, 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 in, no. Is in, is in it, Nigeria. Is it, I don't want to go with semantics. I don't want to go with issues that, okay, this has happened, let us do this. No, you know it. You know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. How many Igbo men will walk into an office and get what he wants mm. without talking to anybody? I, I mean, it applies to virtually all. No, 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 no. You see, I gave you an example that somebody prominent that has a program on television, but because he wore Ishiago, mm. a security agent paid with taxpayers' money, used the gun on his legs just two, three days ago. It is, it is, it is ancient hatred. Mm. Look, we have to clear all this. Nigeria is a sweet place. Before this time, nobody knew. Go to any part of the north, go to anywhere. You see Igbos all over the place. Mm -hmm. If the Igbos don't believe in Nigeria, they won't be investing everywhere. They won't be investing everywhere. The and no that tribe. Exactly. No that tribe has, has done that. Because you, you're saying that the Igbo, the Igbo man is the, or the Igbo tribe is the most hated, you know, it's quite uh, debatable. Because it's not debatable. The, 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 it the, is settled. The, the resourcefulness, the enterprise, you know, the hard work of the Igbo man will amount to nothing. See, if do, other tribes do you know where, not accommodate do you know, the Igbo man. Do you know where... And as I've said earlier, the Igbo man is accommodated in the north, the, do you in know, the south, Do you know where the there is no policy to bring down the Igbo man? Mm. It is only in the southwest. I told people, we are having a short conference sometimes. I said, look, tell me the Igbo man. Because they are talking of, we are talking about this thing. I said, what will happen if the southeast doesn't get this presidency? That was my question. They said, no, we we'll go to Yoruba because we are saying it must go to the south. They said, no, no, no. I said, no. Mm. Tell me the Igbo man who's a millionaire today, a billionaire or trillionaire, who didn't start from Lagos. There was no policy to bring him down. He was free to do everything. Chief, um, we have other 
areas of this um, conversation, we want to also look at which is the um, um, election. So let's redirect and go you, back. You to moved the, me to that place. <laughs> yeah, so well, I, was, I, was, I was going to talk about. I was going to talk about how we are going to put Obi or Okonkwo. We cannot. In our we <laughs> cannot have you here <laughs> and not raise all of these issues yes. that concerns yes. the southeastern yes. yes. part of the country. It's, it's important to have this conversation. Mm, yeah. The it's issue of insecurity is, is even germane. Yeah, yeah. Germane. And, and, and to the elections, it mm. has its effect on the election. So let's talk about the ZLP part. Dr. Um, Obiora has, has been going around the country. His campaigns have been everywhere. And um, we, we have seen some of his, uh, you know, campaign policy, one of which is job creation through business opportunities. Let's talk about that. Just like you said, you know, the Igbo man is, in, is a very enterprising uh, man and in, in, in entrepreneurial um, in nature. They're not the set of people who necessarily believe in the white collar job. So what kind of jobs uh, will your, um, your candidate, if elected, will, will be creating in that state? If, if you look at the 10 point agenda, mm -hmm. it is encompassing from every sector. You see, if you're a company, and those things he has atomized there, as we're talking about job, mm -hmm. some of those things he's doing now, human, human capital development. It is not enough for you to graduate and come out. He will have value even when you are in school. A lot of people wants to get to government house because they want to be called the governor. Check all of them, look at their policies. Obi Rokongo will tell you, this is what I want to do. This is how I will do it. He's not claiming to build a bridge where there is no water. Mm -hmm. Job creation includes those that have graduated, those that are not skilled, they have to be skilled, those that it's not everybody it's not a must everybody must go to the university some people do well after secondary school you get them and build them up so that they be able to do something there's a small boy from that anambra uh, a young man a young, a young, boy. A young <laughs> no a young boy he's about 11. okay oh okay he's about 11. Mm. okay he did a generator without fuel mm. without oil that's why i told you they should not push these boys. 11. He has never been to school. And it was working. Then he connected the people now who are coming there to charge their phones. He has never been to school. He's from Anambra. There are some of these. Another one did a helicopter, uh, a, an aircraft from waste. The thing took off. And he directed it. He came back. If we are a serious country, there are people like this all over the country. We put them together. See their areas of specialization. Train them. Those who have to send to MIT, we send them to MIT. That's how countries develop. But what they will look at, who is that person? Uh, Okongo. <laughs> that is Nigeria. We don't go for that first 11. Look at the rubbish going on in the country. Obiyo Okongo is a thorough person. He took time to look at the problems of Anambra states. And none of the candidates did that. He looked at the problems of Anambra State and addressed them in the best possible way. It is in the interest of Anambra people. If they want Anambra to move forward mm. from where it is, not retrogressively. Mm. I listened to former Governor <laughs> Pitobi. He was apologizing to Anambra State that will be announced uh, seven, possibly eight years. Mm. Uh, it's a waste. He apologized to them. But you brought him. You told them that this man will continue from where I stopped. Because he had no agenda. I was in, uh, I was in, uh, I think it was Florida, mm. when they met Anambra people. What is it, Florida? Well, Florida? Yeah, when they met Anambra people overseas. Obiano. Then, if Anuba was contesting on that Labour Party, mm. of which I was the national chairman. Mm. So Anambra, the place was full. So candidates were allowed to speak. Peter B was the one speaking out through the meeting until I raised an uh, uh, objection, which was applauded by everybody. I said, Your Excellency, you are not running for election. Allow like Obi not to talk to Anambra people. Why are you the one campaigning for him? Was he not what uh, uh, 
Comme le dad and social they did for Baseki. And now people who want to govern come out themselves and say, look, I want to govern. This is my agenda. So he has apologized to Anambra people. But he's also bringing another person. So if, if the first one failed, mm. what is the guarantee that the second one will not fail? All right, uh, Chief Oyama. Sorry, the point I'm making is, mm. the point I'm making is, Obiro Konko has a broad-based agenda mm. from youth development, from capacity building, from uh, infrastructure. In fact, he has said he will attract $10 billion. Mm. And that he has done. Investors are already coming to him. Hoping that he win the election, they are ready to tap into Anambra State. Huge investment. All right. He has the contacts, mm. and he will be transparent in his government. So it is in the best interest of Anambra people to vote Zeni Labour Party candidate Obi Congo. They will now see what government, what what governance is, good governance is, mm. different from what they have seen since 1999. Uh, well, uh, incidentally, he has to come. Uh, through a platform, a political platform, yes. uh, for him to succeed uh, in the November 6 elections. He left, due to some you know, internal wranglings and crises within the PDP, he left uh, that party for the Zenit Labour Party, uh, the party where you chair. And some persons believe that the ZLP is relatively new uh, to the southeast and, of course, uh, in Anambra State. Do you think uh, Oberon Kokwa can make an inroad on the platform of the ZLP. That, that is a lame argument. Mm. Labour Party was new, headed by me in Ondo State. We unseated the sitting governor and elected Governor Mimiko. Labour Party was new in Edo. Most people didn't know that Adams Ochomole was in Labour Party. It was uh, working together with ACM that Adams became governor. So that argument doesn't hold waters. Mm. We are talking about candidates. What is the capacity of the candidates? What can he do? He's already an employer of labor. They know him in Anambra State. He has thousands of people across the state under his employment. Mm. So we are giving you a good of marketable quality. We say take him. He is better and he's the best for this job. Okay. He will do it. It will not be empty promises mm. because he has already been doing things some of the things that are in his 10-point agenda. I, I, I know that one of that 10-point um, agenda is rapid rural development. Yes. And, and, and this is one area that is usually um, always neglected, you know, um, when in, in the states, because you say the local governments, there's always a struggle to even get, you know, autonom autonomy of um, um, financial autonomy for the local government areas. Are you saying that um, for his um, agenda for rapid rural development, will this include looking at the growth and development of, um, you know, the local government areas by way of fiscal autonomy for them? Yes, of course. The first thing, if you look at the details of his agenda, the first thing within one year he will do is to conduct the local government election. They've not, been, they've not done that in Anambra because they are relying on their funds. He will do that. Then he will get government back to the grassroots. He talked about investment. You don't have to wait for federal allocation. I listened to your paper review this morning when Majid was talking about governments putting on their thinking caps. You saw what the Akwaibo man is doing. That was the point. Each time you flew, you get into Ibom Air, mm. you are sending money to Akwaibo State Government. Mm. Mm. Unknowingly, but they have also taken you to your destination. So Obi Rokonko has this in details, and that's why he's talking about having access to about ten billion dollars, which is guaranteed he will get, and put it in the system infrastructure, rural development. That is, all. have you been to Oka? Mm. You've been to Oka. Oka is like a glorified local government. For how many years since 1999? If you get to Oka, you won't believe that is the state capital. If you look at the map, the drawing of what Obiora has in Oka, you will take Oka to be Abuja. These are what governments have not done. And it is not rocket science. Once you have development at the heart of your, your program, programs, you will do it. How much does it cost? 
But they look at other things. Even the, even the resources coming from the state, IGR, it is not well tapped. On each and the we can fund that place without even federal allocation. But is it tapped? The people are not doing what they're supposed to do or they're doing it to get into the wrong place or wrong places. So that is, that is what Anambra needs. Anambra needs a man of vision, a man of character, a man of integrity, a man who says he will do something and he will do it. And the examples abound. He has, he has done a lot, uh, even with his establishment. Look, you look at what a man is doing now before you give him governor. You don't just take somebody and make him governor. Somebody was talking to me the other day about, I think it was Dan Olasi that was on your program. We argued it yesterday. Uh, on Sunday, I went to pick my wife from the airport. All of them were in the plane. With myself, uh, my own candidate, uh, Professor Soluda and all that. So I told Dan Olasi, when you get to television, speak about your candidate. Stop talking about my candidate that, if not, that is coming from the wrong zone. He is the best for the job. I said, thank you for saying he's the best for the job. You know he's the best for the job. He's not coming from the wrong zone. Mm. And I gave an example. You don't know when God wants to bless a state by making something not to happen mm. in the way you think about it. Because I was coming. I, I took I took Imo, for mm. example. After Chiku Denwa, Imo governorship was to come to Owere zone, my own zone. He left us and go to Hakim Okigwe zone. That one was short lived. Imo got up to take it rightly, right, rightfully. He left us and go to Rochas, the government that destroyed our state. Rochas left. We came back. God brought Hope Uzodema. And today, Governor Hope is showing Imo people what road construction looks like. I'm giving this, that's the point I want to bring. He's showing us certain things that we have not seen. I can't remember, I mentioned this before in one of the programs, maybe for emphasis. I can't remember when I saw street lights in Imo. Now, as you approach Imo, it looks differently. But this is a man that don't want to give opportunity. So God may want to bless a state. Mm. It will not, God said, your ways are not my ways. And my ways are because, not your because ways. Because I'm, I'm, actually, I'm, I'm actually really concerned about this zoning uh, controversy in Anambra State. Yes. Uh, your candidate, uh, Obira Kunko, comes from the Anambra uh, Central, yes. which you know many of the people of Anambra State believe has been favored to produce more of uh, uh, the governors in that state. Won't this impact on the voting pattern, you know, in the November 6 elections against, you know, the ZLP and its candidates? If that, if that was a basis, mm. it would have shown in the PDP primaries. In the PDP primaries, they disenfranchised his voters about 13. They manipulated the system. Yet Obi Orokonkwo lost by four votes. If the zoning was strong, Obi Ora would have gone distant last. Which means the people of Anambra in PDP want Obi wanted Obi Orokonkwo. And most of them are working with him. Look, there are occasions, circumstances will arise. You look at what is best for our people. So that zonal thing, since it didn't show in PDP primaries, the man that won defeated him by four votes after disenfranchising his own voters, that was done with the intent of achieving this so-called zoning. Mm. I'm not imputing zoning, but the candidates that are coming from the other zones don't match Obi Rokonko. And we cannot leave our first 11 and go for third 11. We will not win the match. All right. <laughs> so we are giving you the first 11. Let Obiora finish. He can go back to that zone. Chief. Obiora Konkwo is the best for this job. And I plead with Anambra people. I plead with Anambra people to look at the candidates, mm. not their party, not their zone. Because we are no longer talking about, we are no longer talking about it must be our zone. So you bring a lamp dog and make governor. Instead, we'll be going back. You are the light of the Southeast. Mm. And indeed, the light of the nation. All right, All right. Uh, well, Chief Dan Wanyangu, uh, National Chairman of the Zenith uh, Labour Party, ZLP. We want to appreciate you uh, for coming uh, up with the African <laughs> Voice this morning. <laughs> 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 I will wish uh, your party and its candidates well. 
uh, <laughs> as you go into the Anambra governorship elections. All right, Chief Thank Dan needs coming. to know that we've spent 40 <laughs> minutes already on this conversation. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thanks for checking out Symphony on YouTube. Please be sure to subscribe and like our videos for updates.